So again, what are your names and how do you spell them? I don't want to spell them wrong. Um, Shoal, S-E-I-N. Delanda, I'm going to say it wrong. Delanda, D-E-L-A-N-D-E-L. Okay. And I'm CJ McMahon, C-J-M-C-M-A-H-O-N. Okay. All right, so first question, and if you guys both want to answer, that's cool. If one of you want to answer, go for it. Um, who are your top three instruments? Uh, probably the Canadian. It's different. I think, as far as the band, definitely uh, Behemoth and, and uh, Decapitated are the, are the big hitters as well. But like, we listen to some, we listen to a lot of rap music, a lot of hip hop as well. But obviously, that you can't bring that into what we do. So. Not unless you're a tiller or something. Yeah, yeah. We're <laughs> not going to be a tiller. I don't know. Third band would be like Deathcore, Mr. Ramos band. Okay. We just, oh, I guess the Spies Icon. Okay. Yeah. Alright, um, so that leads me to the next one. What do you guys consider yourself? What genre? I guess you say it's a technical deathcore for sure. Okay. I think How many the new bands are in technical deathcore? Like, what even is that? I, I, we don't even know. It's just like. <laughs> for an autopsy? Yeah, it's for an autopsy for sure. Uh, I'd probably say even um, Whitechapel to a point, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just different. Like we're not typically death core. Yeah, mm -hmm. we like have death metal elements. We have breakdowns, which makes it the core. But it's we have so many different elements. And I think with the new album Sean's been writing for um, you know 2014, it's touching on a lot of others like subgenres that aren't death core that we're gonna try and experiment with. So you know um, by the release of our next album, there's gonna be fans and critics and other people trying to pigeonhole us for something else. So at the end of the day, we're a metal band. I think definitely. And we have different elements of different things. Yeah, because the whole death core, death metal thing, it's a very thin line, and you guys dance all on that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Literally I, mean dance. I, I call you guys death metal, to be honest. Cause Thank you. The death core is a little. Well, like, people treat kind of death core as yeah, a bad word. Yeah. I don't think death core is a bad word. I, I don't think, think so either, but it's like, you know, it's like, God, this is death core, and then I get that, like, face. Yeah. Of, like, <laughs> and you guys are better than that, so that's cool though. Um, so how have you seen the metal scene change in the past five to ten years? Um, it's hard to say because ten years ago I didn't really see all that much metal or death metal. I think, I think guys in, in, in metal bands have gotten a lot prettier. <laughs> like, you know, nice haircuts, nice tattoos, extremely skinny. The jeans have gotten skinnier. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot more females, um, like fans, as well as female artists as well. I think so it's definitely become more um, accessible and, and acceptable as well. Thanks to the internet, things like MySpace and Facebook have really, on YouTube, <coughs> have really helped to, you know, like, things that would have been considered a, a, genre, a genre that was not that popular. Is, uh, well, definitely for younger fans, they've had access to heavy music and, and stuff. So like, I know when I was 12, I definitely wouldn't have been listening to Flat Out, fucking Blast Beats and everything else. But, well, yeah, it's <laughs> good. Again, I'm only 20, I was so. listening to Link Biscuit. So. Nice. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Do you think that the whole pop thing is part of what made Death Core so popular? The pop musicality? I mean, a breakdown is... Yeah. I don't know, I think um, the breakdown itself hasn't nothing new. On that day? Metallica will play a breakdown. You know, Pantera. Like, um, Pantera put up the first breakdown ever, actually. Yeah, so, uh, there you go. It's, it's, it's just a yeah. half time groove. Yeah. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Um, okay, so where do you see the scene in another time? Can't even keep up as it is. Hopefully, we're on top of the scene. Like we are the, the top dogs in ten years. In ten years, hopefully, we'll still be a band. Ten years. Maybe Hope five so. Years. I don't want to work. I don't want to do. Wake up and go. Got to go to my fucking shitty job again. Fuck that. I want to be in a band forever. I want to make money. 
like we need to make money. You know, we're getting older, we want to get married and have kids, so we kind of need money to do that. And um, being in a band is probably the closest thing to actually making money than anything else that I do in my life. We don't work, we're constantly on tour, so it's really hard to make money. Well, yeah, the thing is now that we spend like most of the year on tour, we might be home for like two months or something, or yeah, the year. year. So it's like, Like I work when I'm home for the, fucking, for the two months that I'm there because I'm lucky enough to have a job to go back to. Oh, cool. They let you, like, Well, I work back for friends that oh, okay. own business and stuff. But, like, and not everyone in the band has that privilege, but I think, um, yeah, it's, like, at this point, we're, we're touring that much. It's, like, it's all what happened. So this is our, this is our lifestyle. It's our thing now. So it's the goal to keep it. Yeah, I'll be 40. I'll be going grey and shit. <laughs> Fuck. That's alright. I mean, yeah. I saw suffocation of, like two years ago. And yeah, they're, <laughs> they're, they're old, dude. They're yeah, yeah, old. Well, well, there's not a lot of old dudes out there still rocking. <laughs> yeah. I hope I can still do it. Um, yeah, alright, so your first tour in the US was, what, Summer Slaughter? Yeah. Just, just a few months ago. So, um, how was that crowd of the Summer Slaughter, like, just death metal scene versus, like, this tour's crowd? which is, all, they're all deathcore fans. I honestly think it's the same people. Same people. Same Because, yeah, like, um, I think the, the Summer Slaughter lineup was pretty versatile in terms of the genres that we're playing. Like, Animals as Leaders, like, it's progressive, like, an uh, instrumental band, and then there's, like, Brooklyn, which is somewhere close to that, and also somewhere close to the... And then the Ocean as well. Yeah, like, there's... And Cattle Decapitation, which we're, like, a... Brutal yeah. gore grind band. It's like yeah. so. It was it was <laughs> cool. I feel this tour is. Uh, I think it's a good it's a good selection of bands that fit within the same um, you know under the same roof. The umbrella. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, what about with the Parkway Drive? Because that was I mean Parkway Drive. They're like the fathers of modern day metal. Like, yeah. So, um, like with that whole Australian scene, like, how's that different than the US scene, or is it kind of? Um, I think in Australia, the, the bands, well, there's, there's less bands obviously as well because there's a smaller population. Yeah. So we did a tour with Parkway Drive before we came back over here, and um, more or less we're playing to you know like bands that we're interested in wanting to do, or fans that never heard of us and were solely Parkway Drive band, bands because Parkway Drive is such a such a popular band that like people's idea of metal or metalcore is solely Parkway Drive like a friend has put them on them at some point and that's oh I'm just there listen to Parkway Drive anyway. no they're like standard well in Australia that's they're one of the biggest band in Australia they're huge here yeah they're world, world class band but so it was cool great dudes just really fucking humble, nice, really normal guys. Like, but they're just ridiculously good at what they do, and you know, it's they play the same venue three nights in a row, three thousand people every night, sold out. Like, they're they're massive. They're bigger than pop artists, especially in Australia. But you've seen them play in Europe, like the forty-five thousand people, and every one of those people knew every word. Like, Parkway Drive is just fucking huge, and I guess they've opened up the floodgates for. Other Australian bands such as ourselves and a lot of other bands like Warplane as well to, to get out of Australian waters and, and travel the world and people know that like in the last two or three years they see that these are these amazing bands coming out of Australia and we've got such a fucking tiny population in comparison to Europe and America like there's more people in California than there is in Australia but yet our country is bigger than all of America so it's it's kind of weird. So it's weird because we were influenced by, you know, American bands and European bands and I feel like Australian bands we've kind of fluked it in the sense that we, uh, we're doing something different Got the best by accident. Both. Like it's just we're just um, brought up in a like from the internet or whatever. And and not like having a, a grasp on on genres or getting caught up in 
a genre is like a, maybe American fans might. Uh, we just we like heavy music and that's that. And we don't um, we don't want to push home what we do. And it, in a way, it's kind of it's a, it's a freedom for us to get caught up in trying to sound like this or that. Yeah. And end up getting it wrong. So just do what comes up. I think Australian bands kind of uh, I would do that just because yeah we're over in the island. Yeah, I remember when I first uh, heard of you guys, it was like MySpace days, yeah. and um, I found just Engineering the Antichrist was the first song I heard, and I was like, shit, like this is so good, and like went on your page and was like, oh, Australia, yeah. like you're really going to do me like that, come on, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, like I was saying, like I'm just so glad that you guys are headlining here, I need to see more of you guys in the US. Oh, we'll be coming just, back, we're coming to get back in March as well. Yeah. So it's, you know, we've got, our, our plan for the last two years has been like trying to settle ourselves well in Australia, which we already have done, and, and Europe as well. Europe's a massive market for us, but we've unfortunately up until some sort of never had the chance to come here on a decent package, and, you know, now we've been here twice in three months, and the proof is that we have a fucking huge fan base here, and, you know, we're ridiculously over the moon stoked about, about this because every show is like tonight sold out or very close to selling out, you know, between three and five, six hundred kids every night and it's it's mind blowing. Like some of the shows we've been playing is bigger than like the Denver show we played and a few other shows were bigger than the actual summer slaughter the whole show. Oh, really? Which is <laughs> fucking bizarre. Like. Which is strange for us because like yeah, it's uh, I don't know, it's gone overwhelming. <laughs> we, we had no idea. We didn't like, know what to expect. Like, you know, Summer Slaughter blew our minds. We, we did really well with fans and merch and the other bands have become best friends of all of them. And, you know, it was, it was such a mind-blowing experience. Like, like we literally blew away everybody. Like, the bands we played with, the fans, everything, ourselves. We flew back home after being on the road for four and a half months straight before we went back to Australia. And we were just so happy with how everything went. And then coming here on a headline tour, and we, you know, the, the other bands that are on this package uh, uh, great caliber of bands, amazing bands, and, but we still didn't know what to do, we were like, are these bands going to show us up, are people going to give a fuck about us, this is a headline tour, it's going to really show us how well we're doing here, and we were really kind of like, I guess pessimistic about the whole thing, because we were unsure, so we weren't confident, and then from the first show to this show, it's just been chaos every show, and, it's, and our confidence is really high, but still, we keep it humble, like,